Hey everyone, welcome to Planes Overhead. Uh, I hope all of you are staying safe during this corona crisis. And uh, we're continuing with our uh, radio navigation series. And uh, today we're doing TCAS. Standard disclaimer that I've been using all this while. So TCAS stands for Traffic Alert and Collision Avoidance System. And around the globe, general like, regulations uh, make it mandatory for any aircraft that carries more than 30 passengers have to have a TCAS installed on board. Of course, this uh, regulation may vary from country to country. So TCAS 1 and 2 are the most commonly uh, available versions. And TCAS uses the secondary radar principle, which is using the SSR, which is already on board. And the frequency is 1030 and 1090 megahertz. But the important difference is, of course, it's using for air-to-air -air role. If you remember, SSR, it was using ground-to-air and air-to-ground, but this is specifically air-to-air. -air. So it creates an envelope around the aircraft and triggers audio-visual indications accordingly. So how does it work? So since TCAS uses the secondary radar principle, it is in constant contact with other aircraft around it. It then computes CPA, which is closest point of approach, by taking into account the trajectory of the other aircraft. Okay, so this CPA is continuously computed as and when the aircraft is communicating with other aircraft around it. Then it calculates tau, okay, which is the time to reach CPA and is also called as time to impact, okay. So, based on the tau itself, the aircraft is able to decide the envelope. Okay. Then, what is the major difference between TCAS 1 and TCAS 2? Okay. Now, TCAS 1 and TCAS 2, the major difference here is the TA and RA. TCAS 1 displays range and bearing on the screen, but it generates only alerts. It does not give crew any course of action to follow. Okay. TCAS 2, on the other hand, it detects traffic, not only gives range and bearing, but also provides an action to follow in the vertical plane to resolve conflict. This is called resolution advisory. Okay. Then on basis of the tau, tau is the time to impact, right? It's a Greek letter actually. Uh, the tau doesn't have a full form directly, but TCAS envelopes. These are the TCAS envelopes based on tau, other proximate TA and RA. Let's look. Ha uh, let, let's have a look at the table. So the other intruder is no collision threat, but the traffic is within 30 nautical miles, indicated by a white hollow diamond, right? So proximate traffic is no collision threat again, but it is probably six nautical miles within the aircraft laterally and 1200 feet vertically plus minus above and below and indicated by solid wide diamond okay solid white diamond ta potential collision threat okay and the tau is just 40 seconds okay meaning if you continue the trajectory you will collide in 40 seconds it is indicated by a circle okay solid amber circle resolution advisory it's a real collision threat tau is very less 25 seconds to impact and it's indicated by a square, red solid square. Okay. Uh, the, the numbers that are written, minus 10, plus 0, 05, indicate the altitude of the other aircraft with respect to the your aircraft. Okay. So if it's minus 10, that aircraft is below you. Okay. If it's plus 0, 05, that aircraft is above you 500 feet. Okay. Minus 0, 07, below you 700 feet. And arrow mark indicates whether the aircraft is descending or climbing. Okay, now the arrow mark appears only when the vertical speed of the aircraft is greater than 500 feet per minute. Okay, this is very, very important. You should make sure your aircraft is at least climbing at 500 feet per minute in air spaces where TCAS is mandatory because otherwise this arrow mark will not appear on the TCAS of the other aircraft. Okay, the tau value increases with altitude due to elevator ineffectiveness. So tau, this 40 seconds and 25 seconds is generally around about 10 to 20,000 feet. As in when you go higher, the tau value will change. So tau for RA will become 30 seconds or 35 seconds because the it is giving you more time so that you can react better. And it is giving you more time because the elevator at high altitude is not that effective because the density of air is less. 
Okay, so that's about that. And I guess yeah, that's it for this video. Uh, there's a link for your quiz uh, in the description. So subscribe to the channel, like the Facebook page, give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, comment below if you have any doubts. I will surely get back to you and you can hit me up on these links on your screen. And uh, thank you for watching guys. Cheers and happy landings. Take care. Bye-bye.